Today's a little bit different. We're going to be doing some more dressmaking and something I've actually not tried before. So if you didn't know already, I'm actually a brand ambassador for Minerva and this is my page on their website. And they send me fabric every few months for me to make projects out of for their website. And this time I received some gorgeous viscose which is exclusive to them their own designs and they're really really pretty definitely check them out if you can it's kind of summery but because it's now autumn and the colours are quite autumnal I thought actually I've had a quilted skirt on my sewing list for the longest time so why not do it in viscose that's right we are going to make a quilted skirt using viscose fabric the sewing pattern I've gone with is this is the Ali skirt by NH patterns I've used some of her patterns before and I actually really enjoy them and her sizing is usually spot on for me so I'm hoping that this skirt's really just the same. Although I'm not too concerned about sizing I just wanted a basic kind of a-line skirt for this that I can just adjust as I go. I'm going to take you on my journey to making the skirt so let's go and get started. <laughs> This is a downloadable pattern, so I've gone ahead and printed the pages, I've stuck them back together with tape, and I've decided on what size I want to make the skirt up in. I've gone a size up for the skirt because I'd rather make something that's too big and then I can adjust it rather than making it too small and it won't fit me. So I'm just cutting out the front and the back pieces of the skirt from the viscose fabric. I've also cut the waistband from the viscose fabric too. Just putting the back pattern pieces to one side and I'm going to start with the front. I'm using an 80-20 wadding which is what I would usually use when I'm making quilts and I'm just going to lay that out and place the front skirt piece on top. This coat can be a tricky fabric to work with uh, because of how drapey it is and it's very fluid so I'm being careful not to distort the fabric as I'm laying it onto the wadding. I'm not so worried about stretching the fabric here because once it's quilted I can re-measure and just make sure it's the right shape afterwards. I'm just roughly cutting the wadding back here so I can start spraying down the viscose. To stick the viscose to the wadding I'm using a 505 adhesive spray and this is a temporary glue but it's going to hold it in place while we sew. I'm just leaving some extra wadding around the edge of the fabric just in case there's any movement as I'm sewing the quilted lines later. To draw the quilted lines I'm using a heat erasable pen and I'm drawing diagonal lines on the skirt. On this ruler that I'm using there's degree measurements so I'm drawing these diagonal lines at a 45 degree angle. I'm leaving a two inch gap between each line and then I'm going to repeat the same process in the opposite direction at a 45 degree angle with a two inch gap between each line. decide what colour thread to use for my quilted lines. I've either got a black or a brown and I think we're going to go with brown for this. So just changing my thread over to the brown on my sewing machine. And then I'm going to start sewing down the lines that we've just drawn. I'm going to start with one of the most central lines and I'm going to sew a couple of lines in one direction and then change to the opposite direction and that way I know that my skirt isn't going to distort too much and then once those first few lines are sewn then I can carry on sewing the rest At this point I'm not using a walking foot I'm just using my normal sewing machine foot and it is starting to pucker a little bit 
just because this fabric is so soft it's not quite going under the machine as smoothly as the wadding is so it's leaving little puckers but I can just go back and unpick those and re-sew these lines so I'm just really making sure that that viscose is staying flat as it's going under the foot and this actually worked pretty well there was just a few puckers when I first started so just keep sewing over those lines making sure that viscose is all flat and it looks a little something like this so now just trimming back that extra wadding And here is where I'm going to just re-measure and make sure it hasn't stretched too much. As you can see it's sort of distorted on one side so if I fold this in half I will grab the pattern piece again and just recut to the right size. This is why it's good to make a size bigger because if it is if it does end up being a bit more distorted you're not losing too much fabric. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I think we can move on to the back pieces. So I quilted these off camera. I switched to a walking foot, which was much easier. As you can see, the back pieces are in two separate parts. So I've treated it as one piece and stuck it to the wadding like I did with the front and then quilted the lines through both pieces so that the quilt lines should be pretty even once the skirt's made. And now I'm gonna go ahead and trim back that wadding again. I also use the pattern piece just to make sure all these pieces are the same size and they weren't too far off which is good. Now I'm cutting out my lining pieces. The pattern has separate lining pattern pieces so I'm using those to cut out just from a cream, I think this is cotton poplin. So the front piece is cut on the fold and then the back piece is cut too. This sewing pattern does have darts but because of this quilted fabric I'm not going to put the darts in just because I think they'll be a bit too bulky so I'm just kind of ignoring the darts as I'm cutting out the fabric and then just with my waistband piece as well because the rest of the squirt squirt <laughs> Because the rest of the skirt is quilted, I think the waistband needs to be quilted as well. So I'm just putting some of the same wadding on the back of the waistband piece too. I'm not going to quilt this piece, I'm just cutting it to the right size. And then we're going to sew that on later. So now that my outer pieces are both quilted, I'm going to start constructing the skirt. So just following the, um, the instructions that come with the pattern, I'm sewing the back pieces to the front pieces down the side seams. And I'm using the same seam allowance here as is suggested in the pattern. 
and then once I've sewn these side seams I'm just going to measure it against me and see how it's going to fit because I've got a feeling I'm going to have to trim this back. So just sewing both side seams here with a centimetre seam allowance for now. So ignore my messy sewing room, but we're just going to hold up the skirt and just have a feel for how it's going to look. Because I did go up the size, I'm expecting it to be a little bit too big on me, which it is. So I think I'll just take an inch off both the side seams. And then I'm just going to overlock that seam. You don't need to do this here if you're making this as well. Um, I just like to overlock my edges. So now the skirt's the right size, I'm going to attach the waistband. So the pattern says that the waistband is actually cut slightly smaller than the finished skirt, so that it can be eased in. So I'm just going to pin both sides of the waistband to the skirt and then just ease the rest of the waistband in just by pulling on the waistband slightly. Because this wadding is stretchy that also helps so I'm just going to stretch the waistband to line up with the top of the skirt and then just set that in place. I'm just taking it nice and slow just making sure that those edges are lined up as I'm sewing and I'm using a centimetre seam allowance here again. I'm quite an impatient sewer, so I don't tend to pin so much as I'm sewing. But if you are doing this as well and you'd like to pin the waistband in first, I'd definitely suggest doing that. So here I'm just overlocking the, the back where the zip is going to go. So the two back seams are now sewn with the overlocker. Now I'm going to pop the invisible zip in. I've done this a few times but it's really handy when the pattern comes with instructions for invisible zips because it is good to have a read and just rejog your memory with invisible zips. So with this pattern there's a whole section on fitting the zip which is really handy. So for me to work this out I, I have the zip the right way up and then open it and then flip the left side over so that the teeth are facing outwards and then pin it in place. Then just switching my sewing machine foot over for an invisible foot. And you can see close up here it's got two ridges depending on which side of the zip you're sewing. And then I've just realigned the zip so I've got a little bit going up over the waistband and we can trim that back later. So just pinning that in place. And then I'm going under the left hand side of my zipper foot and placing the teeth into that groove. And then we can start sewing. If you're doing this you just want to make sure that the needle isn't going over the zip teeth because they won't work if it does. So you can always readjust the positioning of the needle if it's a bit too close. I haven't ironed the zip teeth open for this because the foot kind of presses it open for me, but if you prefer to iron the zip teeth open, it can be quite helpful. As I said, I'm an impatient sewer, so I just like to get on with it. <laughs> Now 
And just at the end here, I'm just going back over my stitches. And that's one side done. So again, I'm kind of putting the zip face up and then I can flip the right hand side of the zip over so the teeth are facing outwards again and then pin that in place on the other side of the skirt. And just making sure that that point where I stopped on the left hand side is at the same place I'm going to stop on the right hand side. And then going under the right hand side of the zipper foot, I had to move my needle over a bit for this. So I moved my needle to the left slightly just so I wasn't catching the teeth. And sewing right down until I get to that same point where I stopped before. And then we can do the zip test. Let's make sure it closes. Yeah, perfect. I'm happy with that, let's move on. So I'll change my foot back over to my normal sewing foot. And now I'm just gonna finish that uh, zip seam. So just putting my fabric right side together and pulling that zip out the way and then I can continue that line all the way down to the end of the skirt. Just turn that right out <laughs> and just turning that right side out so I can just test it's all working fine. If I can get the zip, there we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So moving on to the lining, just in the same way that I'd sewn the outer pieces together. So I'm just sewing the lining in the same way I did with the outer. And I'm just using a larger seam allowance again, just to make up for the size difference. So sewing the back pieces to the front. Now to hem the bottom of the lining, I'm just going to use my overlocker along the edge you're not going to see this from the outside so I'm not too worried about folding over twice and hemming I'll just do it quickly and then the second waistband piece goes right sides together to the top of the skirt and again I'm pinning either side first and then I'm going to ease it in like I did with the outer pieces So now the lining of the skirt is right side up, I'm going to place the outer part of the skirt on top and we're going to line up over the top of that zip. So I'm just pinning those back seams in place with the zip sandwiched in between. And I'm just pinning around the waistband as well, so that everything's all lined up. We're going back in with the zipper foot again. 
and we're going to attach that lining to the zip. So I'm just feeling for where that zip is and just sewing that same line again but from the top with the lining in place. This is quite fiddly so I'm going slow with this. So the invisible zip is going into the zipper foot but just underneath that lining fabric. I don't think I've ever sewn the zip in like this and I found it pretty easy actually, it's quite nice to do. And then repeating on the other side as well. And again, I had to move that needle over for some reason. I moved it slightly to the left. And then back stitching at the bottom so that it stays in place. Also, I forgot to overlock the edge of this, so I just went back to my overlocker just to overlock those seams where the zip is. So now the lining and the zip sewn in, I'm just going to sew around the waistband. And I'm just trimming back those extra pieces of the zip that are sticking up. And then cutting off the corners, and they're not very big, but we'll cut them off anyway. And then I'm going to turn right side out, let's see how this looks. So the waistband's a bit tricky, I think I'm going to just um, stitch in the ditch around the waistband so it stays in place. This was a little bulky getting under the foot, but it was okay once you get started. Just giving it a shove. And just stitching in that seam as neatly as I could. I probably should have ironed it first. Now that's done, we can take a little look. Yeah. I'm really liking how that's looking. So now all we need to do is just hem the bottom. So I've so I've gone around the bottom of the skirt with the overlocker and then I'm just going to fold that overlocked seam inward slightly to hem the bottom. So just folding over and then sewing in place. I thought this would be a bit better than folding twice to hem just because of how bulky it might be. So just folding once I think is much better. And I think we're done. So I'm just going to go over the quilted lines with an iron again just to make sure all those lines that I drew with the pen have disappeared. And then I'll give that a quick press and let's see how it looks. Ta-da! I'm really happy with this result. I think it turned out really well. I'm surprised it's not as bulky as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really padded, but I think because it's such a lightweight fabric and quite a thin wadding as well, it worked out really well. And it's going to be a really nice piece in my winter wardrobe. 
like I styled it here with tights and a jumper. I think it's just perfect. My only qualm is that the waistband is kind of folded over, so I've got that crease line, but I think maybe if I'd put a stabiliser on the back of the fabric, that might have helped. But yeah, really happy with the result. So thank you for joining me in this little journey. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for some more fun sewing content. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.